Hi, I'm Alex and this is Tank Tested. Today I want to share with you an aquarium unlike anything I've ever seen in the aquarium hobby. This is an oyster reef tank, and it was designed by my friend Nick to simulate what the Chesapeake Bay might have looked like prior to the Industrial Revolution. Now here's the tank designer himself to give you a tour. Hello, my name is Nick. I'm an aquarist at the Glen Echo Park Aquarium, and today I'm going to be showing you my 120 gallon oyster reef tank that is inspired by the Chesapeake Bay. This tank features oysters and other animals collected from the Chesapeake Bay. I have a scientific collection permit that allows me to go out and collect certain species, though many of these species can also be collected with just a regular fishing license. This tank features three main islands or oyster clumps. The one on the left is pretty tall in order to hide the overflow that was built into the tank. The middle one is the biggest one overall and the one on the right is the smallest and I've used uh, loose oysters to kind of uh, bridge the gap between the three and I've left plenty of negative space uh, because it's appealing and also I wanted the fish to have lots of room to swim around and interact. Most of the oyster shells used in the tank were collected by me while fishing for other uh, small fish. Uh, anytime I found a dead oyster with both halves I would take it home and clean it up and glue it together. Uh, I did get some of these donated from various restaurants, but the bulk of them were collected by me. The way the oyster structures are put together, I've left gaps and, and there's places to pepper in live oysters amongst the empty shells. It's not always easy to find them because I didn't want to mark them and have it be obvious. Um, the only way to tell is to observe them for a good long period of time and you'll actually see them as they're feeding move slightly. The substrate is sand that was collected from uh, the creek that runs through the Glen Echo Park. It was uh, sieved and washed and then I used some pieces of shell litter, broken bits and things like that to give it a natural look. There's also plenty of loose oysters in the tank. They tend to move around. I'll, I'll put them the way I like them and then the crabs will rearrange everything to their liking. The 120 is plumbed together with about a 100 gallon touch tank. They both flow into a 75 gallon sump that I custom built out of a uh, standard 75 tank and there is a skimmer on it, a little refugium, and uh, plenty of live rock in there, and a big pump that goes through a manifold uh, that I can control how much is diverted to each of the two tanks. My main experience has always been doing freshwater planted tanks, uh, so brackish is still quite new to me. Um, I thought it would be challenging, but it, it's actually pretty simple. The salinity of the tank is usually kept at 1.018. It's about halfway between fresh and uh, full salt water. Uh, most of these animals are used to varying salinity levels. Uh, I mean, every time it rains, the salinity goes down. When it hasn't rained for a while, the salinity goes up. Uh, for the most part, they're it's a pretty easy to keep tank. In the Chesapeake Bay, the temperature also changes with the season. These fish aren't overly sensitive to temperature changes as long as it's gradual. And the truth is we don't heat any of the tanks at the Glen Echo Park Aquarium. All the animals can handle it. They just slow down a little bit, but they are still fine. They still eat, it's, they just don't eat as much. I, I used mostly small fish. I didn't want anything to be too crowded. I wanted there to be lots of hiding places so that we'd see natural behavior in the tank. Um, I didn't want too much fighting. 
We have uh, mummy chogs, which is a type of killifish. Uh, you'll notice in the video some of the fish have little nips out of their tails and fins, and even with as much space as I've given them, they do get uh, into little uh, tiffs now and again over territory. There is the sheep's head minnow, which is one of my favorites because of the beautiful iridescent spot on the top of the head. Uh, in the spring, when they start breeding, they're, uh, the rest of the body turns a dark black and that, that iridescent spot just seems to glow. The sheep's head minnows will periodically all line up in a line and just stare at me while I'm doing maintenance on the tank. And it's just the funniest thing. I have a fish called a clingfish or skillet fish. Uh, you'll often find them attached to the underside of oysters and rocks and crevices. There's a species of goby in the tank called a naked goby, one of my favorites. The naked goby is the most common goby species in the bay. They kind of bumble around from oyster to oyster looking and watching the other fish to see see if there's any food in the tank for them to uh, to nibble on. There are three spider crabs in the tank though at the moment only one is out the other two were just too well hidden. Since Alex came out and did his photo shoot Two of the spider crabs have been caught spawning in the tank, and I'm hopeful that I will see the female with eggs soon, though I don't believe that I will be able to get them past the larval stage in captivity. Primarily the fish and the invertebrates in the tank eat uh, either uh, squid that's cut up, um, mysis shrimp, or sometimes just a hobby grade um, marine pellet food. I've recently started culturing phytoplankton. It just got too expensive using the bottled um, live plankton. Um, so I'm gonna have four bottles going at a time and be able to feed uh, the bivalves in the tank as well as sponges and other things that are filter feeders. I'm calling this my historic Chesapeake Bay oyster reef tank because you're, you're just not likely to see a big full oyster reef like this anymore. Um, the current oyster population in the Chesapeake Bay is about 2% of what it was, you know, even 100 years ago. So the Chesapeake Bay uh, covers two states, Maryland and Virginia. It's about 200 miles long and it's the largest estuary in the United States and one of the largest in the world. And I wanted to educate people about um, what it could look like if, if we did a little better at uh, protecting the bay. An adult oyster can filter about 50 gallons of water a day. Um, before oyster populations started to decline due to uh, human involvement, it was said that the, the oysters in the bay could filter the entire volume of the bay in about a week. Um, now it would take over a year to filter the same volume of water. Overharvesting was the main cause of their decline, but there are also introduced viruses that are wreaking havoc on the, the oyster population. One of the main problems, though, is the habitat loss. New oysters need to grow on something hard, and when you dredge the bottom of the bay, you mix everything up, and um, it, it all gets covered in sediment, uh, which is why there is an effort to reintroduce the, the shells, the discarded shells from restaurants. There's many uh, oyster recycling programs in order to um, put that habitat back into the bay for the oysters. My name is Nick Kinzer. Uh, you can find my work at the Glen Echo Park Aquarium here in Glen Echo, Maryland. You can also look up the aquarium at gepaquarium.org. So that's Nick's Oyster Reef Aquarium. But before I lose you, there is a part 
two to this story, and I want you guys to help me tell it. Next month, I'll be publishing a video on how Nick built this aquarium. So if you have any questions for Nick, leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to incorporate them in the next video. Nick also has his own website, and I will leave a link in the description below to that. Uh, finally, as Nick said, the Oyster Reef Tank lives at Glenneco Park Aquarium. Now, they're a nonprofit, so I would love if you guys would consider supporting them. You can donate either money, or if you live in the DC area, consider donating an old tank that you no longer use, or even your time. Uh, they do really great work, and I'd love to see them thrive. And I want to thank my Patreon supporters for backing the work I do. If you find my channel valuable, consider supporting me there. Or by sharing this video with someone that might find it interesting. 